Hey everybody, it's out here in my garage outside Sacramento. It's freaking 109 degrees in here, like crazy. It, it makes my barbecue, remember I, I did a rack of ribs yesterday? And I don't know how many beers I pounded while I was standing out there in this heat waiting for them to get done. Like it's, it's crazy. And it was right around, we had an earthquake yesterday, right? And I made a post about this on LinkedIn about how I didn't have to worry, you know, about the power going out because I had this uh, sonic core. And almost immediately, a buddy of mine up in Canada sent me a, a LinkedIn chat and we were going back and forth. Say, I got a guy that's looking at either a Tesla or a Sonnen and can you like refresh my memory on Sonnen? And so I did and, and just gave him the finer points, just a few talking points uh, between the two. And one of the things that came up was generators. You know, I told him that the, the Eco and the Eco Links support generator. Uh, the Sonic Core doesn't, and I know that the Tesla does. So if that's an important criteria, uh, then that would kind of push you over uh, to that solution. And we went back and forth uh, for a little while, and he came back. He says, "Yeah, you know about that Tesla. Uh, they do support generator, but he said it, it's kind of kind of weird because you have to wait for the solar." production to drop to like one or 200 watts uh, before the generator will kick on. And he said that, you know, that's kind of, you know, not ideal. And I told him that's, uh, that's pretty common with a lot of ESS manufacturers. You know, if you have 2000 watts of load and 1000 watts of sun, and you've got 10% state of charge left, Bad news, man. You're probably going to have a shutdown on your system. Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, because you, you never know, right? Uh, but in that scenario, it's probably going to shut down uh, at some point. And I, I had to tell him that that's what the Eco and Eco Links did. And like I said, it's pretty common. And here's why. Generally speaking, we do not install solar on the load side of a generator. That's a no-no. And the reason is because solar inverters are current sources. They create current, electrons. If the grid voltage and frequency is good, out go the electrons. And once it hits the breaker in that breaker box, then we have really no control over where those electrons go. Right? That's the whole point of having a, uh, an ATS or some type of isolation uh, in the battery system itself to cut off the microgrid PV production from making it out to the grid, right? Because we can't control it. There are some that have a way. Man, I wish I could remember uh, what the SMA Sunny Island did. But man, I, I just I hold that pretty yellow inverter in such high regard that Maybe I'm just thinking it could do that when it really couldn't. I don't know. And, but it's been so long that I, I just can't remember what it did. However, I had to tell this friend of mine that a lot of the things do that, right? They, they will not start a generator if there's PV production because they do not have a way to prevent those PV electrons from backfeeding into the generator wires. Right? Even though the generator is connected you know, internally to whatever ESS you have, uh, maybe, or maybe it's in a, an outside box with the ATS box like a lot of these other guys have, um, you're kind of at the mercy of that thing. right? So the easiest thing to do for the manufacturer is to just set this 100, 200 watt limit because they know that that amount of backfeed into the generator is probably going to be okay. Yeah, or the loads are gonna suck it up anyway, right? But this takes a lot of end user monitoring. They have to be watching the state of charge. They have to know what the PV production is, right? And then what they have to do, if, they, if the system starts getting into extremis and they're at a low state of charge and they have high loads and the generator won't turn on because they're solar, then they have to go out there, turn the PV inverter off, wait for the generator to start, or force a generator start manually. They have to wait for the generator to fill up, 
the batteries to whatever state of charge they want, then they have to shut off the generator or wait for it to automatically stop. Generally, if you manually start a generator, you have to manually stop it, yeah? Then, once that's done, then the homeowner and user has to remember to go back out and turn the PV inverter back on so that it's ready in the morning or the next day or whenever, right? And generally speaking, the more of that kind of, of action items that you leave up to the homeowner, uh, the, the worse off the system is going to be, right? Unless there is a huge amount of customer expectation management and training, then you're probably going to be okay, right? But the bottom line is a lot of ESS manufacturers will have this same generator limitation or not really limitation, it's, it's just the behavior, yeah? So this is something that you need to talk to the homeowners about upfront. If you are a homeowner, this is something you need to talk to your installer about. You need to ask them specifically how this thing handles a generator, right? And a lot of companies just do not want to deal with generators. It's this foreign third party thing that, that causes more issues than it solves, I guess, is, is the way they think of it. So anyway, uh, let me hear your comments, right? Let me, let me know how you guys deal with these kind of generator issues, what kind of workarounds you have, and let's share them in the comments section of this post so that we can all benefit from it, yeah? So anyway, stay cool as much as you can. I'm so looking forward to NAPSEP in a month, like we can say it's next month, yeah? So take care. See you next time. Bye.